previously on Cheaper by the Dungeon. You all see in the distance this black dragon. Pollen is flying off the wings. There are six individuals who defy all prophecies. There is Karen, there is Lou, and there are you three. Who's the six? Points to Robin. I say now with a quick conducted bolt of a massive amounts of lightning. Ooh. Like striking through a dragon now on the ground walking and then their face comes into view out of the dust towards you three and you see spores are raining down and you all look down and see someone wearing a fine suit and a thick straight across mustache this will be over very soon for them anyways Coming across the battlefield, you see blasting through and slams through Lou Blonger, pushing them aside, making them stumble backwards as they caught whatever this bolt was in their hands. You see, the Wizard King has arrived. everybody dm seth here back with finale part two we're actually keeping it to two parts instead of three parts this time hopefully we'll see how this goes but along with me are the finale boys we got jacob hey finale boy jacob here adam yo what's going on and connor hello finale boy connor number three wait third finale boy (laughs) i give up but not third place (laughs) season three finale three finale boys and I got nothing to back that up. You can tell we're we're flying fast and loose today. But we're not going to do a bit because we got so much content to get through. The episode is the bit. This is the bit right now. The whole episode's one big bit. But no, before we get in, we do want to do our new bit of reading iTunes reviews. So, Adam... Take it away. Thank you, Seth. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the real reason you listen to the show, the review review for the reviewers like you. Uh, this is from Jasper the Bard, who gave us a five-star review. Thank you very much, Jasper the Bard. I'll read what they said here. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The person reading this. Do you like D&D, demons, bad puns, cute animals, and crying? Do you hate raisins? You should. Well, then, this is the perfect podcast for you, even if you don't fit the above criteria. Seth is a really good DM. His storytelling, NPCs, and imagination are incredible. The world building is so good. This is an actual review, by the way. I'm not making this up to, like, inflate. This is legit. Um the world building is so good. I honestly want to live in this homebrew. Science, please make this happen. Jacob, Adam, and Connor are also really good players. The role play and acting are amazing, and I love all their characters so much. Zippy the most. Sorry. Actually, I'm not <laughs> actually I'm not sorry. A little sorry. <laughs> uh, nothing to be sorry about. Uh, <laughs> this is not me. This is him. This is him. Um, all four of them are amazing. Uh I'm in the Discord server, and everyone is so nice, inclusive, and understanding. I'm really glad I stumbled upon this podcast when I did. I've made lots of new friends in the server, and I've also become a better DM and player. Trust me, you're not going to regret listening to this podcast. End quote. I give this five-star review a six-star review, because not only did they also fit in an advertisement for our Discord, but it was just so full of love and it just so encapsulates what we're trying to do. Just read this. I can't stop smiling. Everyone who leaves a positive review for us on iTunes. Thank you so much. It means so much to us without further ado. There is no bit Seth. Get on with the recap. <laughs> Wait, what are the other people's ratings? Connor? Uh, I would give it, uh, uh, seven jelly bellies. Hmm. Hmm. Good metric. Mm-hmm. Um, I give it a three out of five. It's definitely a ten out of ten, in my <laughs> opinion. Very original. <laughs> I think it was a bit too uh, pandering to a certain bramble patch. <laughs> <laughs> Overachiever, no. you know. I don't, remember, to I don't remember, remember that part, but I think it was good. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why it's only a seven jelly bellies because there's a little bit of extra zippy love. 
I didn't even know reviews could uh, be this long. Like, this is so heartwarming. It's great. Challenge for anybody. See see who can leave a comment with the longest text for us to <laughs> yeah, read. Yeah, top that. I want to see what the cap is. Um, <laughs> We're going to get, like, a 10-page <laughs> essay. All From now on, all of them are 10 pages, and it's like this bit just becomes impossible to do. Um, but thank you. That was very, very kind. Um, say thank you, everybody. Thank you. Namaste. All right. Finale time? Let's do it. It's finale time for the oh finale boy. time. Oh boy. All right. Well, let's recap. Okay. So last time you were fighting a dragon. Karen. Karen, your, your past tiefling friend, the one with one horn. Uh, they are actually a beast of creation, as you know. And they kind of have some shape-shifty powers. And for this, they became a dragon. Um, you were battling through the Jadu streets, meeting past people that you encounter during this arc, um, and, and moving through the painting world until eventually you came face-to-face with Karen. Right after doing an explosive multi-druid attack with lightning from an airship, it's very hard to explain concisely because it was such an epic moment. But please listen <laughs> to the last one if you haven't. I don't know why you're listening to this one if you haven't listened to the last one. But uh, you were fighting Karen the dragon alongside Randy and Alexandre Dumas, the soon to hopefully be dragon slayer. Um, while Apophis was dealing with Wells, uh, Bradley and Robin and James were on the airship with Peterson, uh, still unconscious. And as you were fighting Karen, you were destroying them, putting immovable rods in their skulls, freezing their mouths, and slashing them all up every way. But they broke free, spinning into the air, and breathed fire down onto the Jadu streets, which was prepared by the corrupted people now. And it made a gazer symbol in the ground. And teleporting from the moon, Jadu using the gazer symbol was Lou Blonger, the real one. You haven't seen this guy since season finale for season. What was two. he doing on the moon? That's that's how they're gonna dis- uh, get their distribution going now because they can just zip all over home because they have access to the moon and they know how to make gazer symbols. And Lou's our ally, right? I'm confused. I forget who he is. He's just like a Adam. You're gonna have to listen back through all of our episodes. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just before they landed and were beginning to wreak havoc, more havoc on Jadu, the Wizard King showed up throwing a wand into their chest. And you just hear. Walking through the wreckage and what remains of the Jadu streets is the Wizard King in full wizard armor with several wands orbiting around them. They come face to face with Lou Blonger. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Wizard King, wow. I didn't think I'd be meeting you so soon. <laughs> I feel so grateful that you have humbled yourself to walk out here amongst your people. Get some fresh air along with the rest of us. You doing this all just for me? I feel just special. You, you must be Lou Blonger, huh? Oh, you even know my name. Wow, I really am an honored guest. And I would reckon you do know me considering you banned my business venture here. Not very kind of you, I would say. Well, did you think that the people of Jadu really needed your snake oil treatment? Okay, well, I think you can see that my products, my pills, are working quite effectively. Just take a look around at your people. I think you'll find they're doing much better off now. All I sense in them is their magic being drained. 
That's helping them. Oh, I would say so. I'm giving them perspective. Something you severely lack. Because you've been sitting up there. Everything's gone your way. The people of Jadu need a wake-up call. That just because of their innate abilities, everything isn't going to go their way. That they aren't just better than everyone else. That goes for you, the king of the glorious chosen crop. You're the worst offender. You have everything. You literally have a vault filled with grand treasure clues. People have died searching their entire lives to find one, yet you are sitting on quite the nest egg. So your plan is just to be rid of us? And what? Take our place. Seat yourself on the throne, and you will become the very thing you hate. You descendants of the Dibs family have always been... So clouded in your judgment. (laughs) Oh, I am no dibs. I don't align even with the longer values. Everyone is clouded. Everyone in the world is out for themselves. Out to seek their own power. Greeters, you, everyone and the dibs. They all wanted to make sure their camps were more blessed than everyone else's. But me, I see the bigger picture. I see the game the gods have put us in. And I want to break the rules. I want everyone to prosper. And for that to happen, We all need to be on the same level. Lou, you will not win. Not while I am here. And the magic wands start orbiting around Verulius faster. Oh, I made sure that I will. And you start seeing Lou raise their hands as the viney, thorny roots of his flower encompassing both fists. And you just hear screams in the distance as you look around and see those who have been corrupted by the pollen are now being drained of their magic. And you see it's all flowing into Lou. Well, Verulius, let's see how you handle this. Lou rushes forward. Verulius, as Verulius quickly, swiftly launches a magic wand to meet them halfway as boom, a shockwave as they clash in the Jadu Square. You all feel it, a wave of power wash over your faces in fur. And you are there in the wreckage, some in the buildings from the being hit by care and being cratered in, and Darian, you being on the ground in the streets. You all see this happening, and Karen flying and perching on a building in the back as they try to recover about 200 feet off. What would you like to do? Okay, first off, Jake, is Zippy conscious? Oh, yeah, I'm still alive, but I am cratered in this side of this building. Okay, I'm going to look at Darian and say, Darian, you're good! Yeah, we need to regroup. Okay, I'm getting zippy. And I'm just going to, with my wings, I'm just going to hightail it down to where zippy is in that building. Zip, zip, come on. And I'm going to try to find him. You you know where zippy cratered, so you can fly in there with your wings. 
okay. I, I go in and I I gently like shake him back to, I know he's not unconscious, but like I kind of, Zip, Zip, you okay? How many fingers do you see? Uh, hey, Bippy, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, c- come on. I'm going to, I'm going to pick him up c- and look for his carpet. You see the carpet is just kind of like fluttering and it's slowly moving on the ground next to him. Yeah, come on, you alakazam thing. Zip, can you fly? Uh, give me a second. I just got my freaking arm bit and thrown into the wall. I guess you could say this is a hairy situation. Sorry, low fruit, but we got to get moving. We got to find Darian. He's over there. <laughs> um, while that's happening, uh, I would have went... Uh, running off to check on Alexandre because he got, last I saw him, he got thrown off of Karen, so I don't know where he totally ended up and what state he's in, and same with Randy, so while Norman's checking on Zippy, I'm gonna run and find the other two. The other two regroup around you. They were knocked into nearby buildings but have gotten loose and and made it out. Randy again being his massive size uh, again. They regroup and Randy goes, oh damn! Yeah, that, that you know, from dragon to dragon, that was a good hit. <laughs> fair is fair. Looks like it made some pretty solid contact, but I'm, I'm glad to see that you're still standing. Alexandre, how are you faring? Oh, I've, I've done better, but this is, this is the time of my life. <laughs> we're so close. They were so close. Well, hopefully we can we can finish this off because uh, I'm sorry, Seth. For context, how much did did we? Uh, kind of catch that dialogue between uh, Verulius and Lou? I would say yes, you guys heard it in the distance. They're not that far off. They're they're relatively close. Well, let's... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling good because we're going to have to move quickly. I have no idea how long Verulius is going to last against Lou in that state. He is taking on immense power from those blue flowers and Many, many spellcasters were infected here, and I, I, I cannot imagine what Verulius is facing. So we need to regroup, and we need to help him whatever way we can to kill that bastard. Come on, let's grab the other two. And you regroup with Zippy and Norman. Darian, how are you faring? You doing all right? Randy, and uh, Dumas. I mean, Dumas. The three of us are the, <laughs> the three of us are fine. Zippy, you're. You're looking a little a little worse for wear. Do you have anything that can that can pick you back up? Does anyone have any water? I just realized I never talk about drinking water or eating food much in this podcast. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna take a pee break on the topic. I was gonna say even use on the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm okay. Um, I may heal myself a little though. Just me. That's fine. Just. <laughs> I mean, I'm also a little bit bloody, but uh, maybe not at like five health points or something like that. But you know, I'm getting down there. <laughs> well, you guys sort out your healing. We need to we need to form a plan quickly. The other Verulius is not going to be able to take on Lou in that state, or maybe he is. Dumas, I feel free to speak up, but I I'm not optimistic. He's playing with some twisted magics here, and I don't know how long it'll take Karen to recover. And I definitely don't think he can stand against the two of them alone. So we need to find. A way to assist him in whatever way we can. I, I don't think it's a good idea. Pop up is so frail. Even if he is using all the magic he has now that he doesn't have to watch the crystal, I don't know how much time he has left. This is this is going to be our only chance to get him while he's distracted and facing someone of his equal power. Maybe we can tip the scales. That's true, but we still need to keep Karen occupied. We had all five of us facing off against him, and he still managed to get away. Listen. We got so many enemies around us. We gotta split up. We can take the dragon. I know it's only two of us, but... Maybe we can stall them until you deal with Lou. And then come help us take him out, but... I... I I think we gotta do something. I'm gonna look at Dumas, I'm gonna say, If you take on Karen with Randy, do you trust us to look after your father? There's no one else I would rather do that task. But I agree with Randy. Please come help us with the dragon <laughs> as soon as possible. I don't know if the two of us will be able to. And, the, and then you hear in the back. Who <laughs> said you had to do it with two people? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and slithering yes. in. 
with like a little bit bloody. They're not really. They they seem to have scuffled with wells in the back, and they're like, man, I just got totally blue balled on my fight. <laughs> I was just going, like, all over this guy, and then everybody just disappeared. Oh, you mean Wells is still alive? Oh, I hate that bastard. Freak that guy. I clocked him. That brain damage is going to last forever, man. (laughs) Man, I hate that guy. I need some, like, closure, you know? Well, you got a good case right there. Giant dragon, not this one. This is, friend, that one's bad. The, The one with the one horn. Yeah, I saw. I think with my new my new arm, I might be able to extend it and get him in a headlock or something. <laughs> that would be the sickest thing I've ever seen. I feel much more confident with it being the three of you. I never like splitting the party, because that's never typically fared well. Uh, I am going to look at Dumas, um, who I always want to call dumbass for some reason, but I'm going to look at Dumas, <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm going to say, well, wish us luck, and we, we'll do the same for you. Remember, you have a bardic inspiration. It would be sick if that could make it into the narrative somehow. I don't know. I think our fight is going to be mostly off screen. I'm going to turn back. Well, you <laughs> never know. Maybe it's like a, a, a blurred out background thing. You know, quick mention. Who knows? Okay. But yes, if you take care of Pop Up, I will take care of the dragon. It's a deal. And they clasp your hand. And Darian, you notice. <gasps> Not as much. Oh! But the faintest little poof of cool magic. Yeah! Definitely cool. not at your level. <laughs> I try really hard not to look at Darian. Yes, yes, of course. Darian looks at Norman and and, and gives a bit of a nod. <laughs> I get that like strong. tight feeling in my throat, like oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we must be on our way. Randy scoops up uh, Alexandre and uh, Paphos, and he's like, "All right, let's do this." And they go poof, walking through the houses and the wreckage towards Karen. All right. Zippy, how are you how are you feeling? Are you all healed up? I'm trying, but there isn't time for me to just say it out loud. <laughs> that was, Here's your that, chance! This that was me transitioning to you. <laughs> uh, the last chance to heal and like break a pot with a fairy in it before the last boss room. I'm gonna use a level four cure, a cure wounds. Okay. I get back twenty-two health. Not bad, not bad. It's okay. Alright. Um, DM, while he's doing that, like while he's healing his wounds, do I have time to fly back up and grab that immovable rod in the sky? Yes, you do. And it's covered in Karen like blood. <laughs> I, I grab it first. Ugh! I try to like pull it down. I'm just getting blood all over myself. Ugh. Ooh, I'm going to I want it documented. I bottle some of this ichor. Uh, this okay, yeah. mm. and then I. Uh, Man, wh- you guys are just always collecting blood. I, I don't. You always <laughs> like be it mirrors, be it Karen. Do you know what they say, Seth? It's in you to give. So I <laughs> deactivate, and I'm gonna like somehow put it on my person in that D and D way. That I'm gonna fly back down to the group. Could come in handy. Um, uh, Jacob, how how much health do you, does Zippy actually have? Though, how low are you feeling? How low are you? Tell the viewers that. Oh, well, I'm just, but I'm asking you because I might. Uh, I can try and give you a little more. Forty two health. Oh, out of well, that's an even bigger secret. TMI, Connor. You can't do <laughs> it's just the fourth I have forty-two health. Oh, you're full health. No, of course I'm not. <laughs> it's it. Well, I'm gonna literally impossible for me to have forty-two health as full health. Look, I, I was gonna heal you more, but I wanted to make sure there was actually like room to heal you. Oh, heal me more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely lower than Zip. Oh, Zip, you look so much better than me right now. Ugh. Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Don't worry about. Oh, 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 my knee too. Oh, <laughs> for God's sake. Oh, did my shoulder just pop? Ow. Oh, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Hmm. <laughs> I say. I, I can't. Uh, I'll use a level two cure wounds on Norman. Yeah. What? No, you didn't have to. This. Oh, this is so unexpected. Thank you so much. Wow. Sure off. Uh, that's uh, twelve. Thank 12 you. For you. Are we all ready? <sighs> yeah. No. To go to Lou. Um, I think we're good to go. I, I mean, he's right over there, and we ought to help Ruius. Look, guys, I just want to say before we dive in here. Let's go. Hold on. <laughs> yes, we can't waste any time. <laughs> I just want to be clear <laughs> that if things take a turn for the worse today, and we have to choose. I'm going to be picking you two over Jadu. Good. 
This place sucks. I'm just being... <laughs> I already got the Druids. We already got the Druids out. Well, I mean, tons of people, you know, under mind control. Are they really at fault, responsible for the evil I didn't really meet anyone deeds? else, so I don't really care. I mean, I mean, that's the other side of the argument, too. I mean, like, do they really have value if you don't know that? Well, it's a muddy issue. Yeah, they'll just end up in the crystal, right? Uh, except it's on another plane. Yeah, they'll find their way in the bag. Everything <laughs> else does. Sometimes the mysteries have the fun. Look, cross plane stuff. It's fine. I don't. I don't need to explain all of this. Uh, anyway, all I'm trying to say is that at the end of the day, Jadu doesn't matter to me. You two do, and if it comes between them and you, it's no question to me. Why do you think this choice will happen? Because we're dealing with Lou, supercharged, and I don't know what he's capable of like this. I just think it's a weird assumption. And a bit of a negative note to start the fight on. For sure. Look. I'm just <laughs> expecting the worst and hoping for the best and making it clear. Are you guys ready to go? Darren, lead the way. Yeah, Darren, you first. <laughs> Looks scary up ahead. I know. Tell me about it. Yes, Darian, you, you got it. <laughs> We're right behind you. <laughs> all right. We're right behind you. Let's go. You all land on the streets and make your way through the wreckage an open area and you just hear <laughs> magic spells being cast and wands flying as Lou with thorn wrapped fists is just punching them back and moving at ridiculous speeds this is a fight at such a high caliber you've never seen before as they are zipping around and you can see Verulius is slowly getting winded as they're just casting spell and wand after wand, and Lou is batting it back. You are walking through the streets and you see some people on the ground just kind of almost like convulsing. As you can see, the blue flower is attacking them and draining them. And you make it into the area and they separate and skid across the floor backwards from each other. And you hear Lou just go, oh, oh, what a workout. Now I'm getting going. And you see Virulius glances over and sees you guys. And especially you, Zippy, and goes, Coco. Hi. <laughs> and Lou notices Virulius' gaze has shifted and they got distracted. And they go in and boom. <laughs> And Virulius goes flying over and through the sky as they just got smashed. Oh shit! Maybe it's better I sit this one out, guys. Nothing but a distraction. Is Lou kind of like lingering in the air? Uh, Lou is still on the ground. They knocked Virulius into the air. Before Lou jumps up after him, I'm going to draw the black bow and I'm going to cast a lightning arrow. The, the, you see the arrow drawn in the bow suddenly become charged with electrical energy and it launches out with this beam of light and it launches towards Leo. Uh, while he's rolling for that DM, is Virulius, does, is he still careening wildly? Like, does it look like he's going to plummet or is he like stabilizing in the air or anything? He got knocked backwards in through the sky, like more towards the castle. And they look like they're just flying backwards the robes. You can't really gauge how they're doing. And like he's too far, I could catch him at this at this. Yeah, speed? he immediately moved like a hundred feet. Okay. Boo. Okay, great. So that's a seventeen plus eight for a twenty-five total. Alright. You hit. As you arc back your bow and let it fly. Twenty-eight damage. And nineteen of that is lightning damage. Whoa. Okay. And they have to make a constitution saving throw, I believe, because it's the black bow, or be blinded. Uh, they do. They do. All right. They fail. <gasps> yeah. Yes. <You> see, <laughs> they are just posing after they just knocked Grulius back through the sky. And you, you, and a bow pierces through, slicing their suit. And black clouds go over their eyes as they just are like, ugh. What is this? Taking the rest of this moment, I'm going to immediately start dashing towards him while he's blind. Wow. All right. Oh, 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 careful, man. That's Lou. They're dashing forward, and they're, like, shaking their head. 
and then you just see on their hand, they have several rings on their fingers, and one of them ding, glows, and the darkness goes away. Oh, and shit. they see you <laughs> running. Are you going to stop or keep going? How far away is he? 15 feet. Uh, 15 feet. If you'll let me then, I'm going to teleport forward with distant strike, and I'm going to attack him twice with the spectral katana. Okay. Uh, that's two 19s to hit. Okay. Neither of them hit. Shoot! I thought that might be the case. What? You Damn. teleport forward with two spectral slashes, and you just see you're like behind them. You teleport behind just to get right at their neck, and they just quickly grab your blade Whoa. before it cuts them, and they just go, I was wondering when you were going to show up. And they just arc back. And are you going to hold on to the sword as they try to, like, throw you forward? Or are you going to let them just take your sword? As my reaction, I want to face death. Okay. So I'm going to teleport, like, 20 feet beside him. So, he, like, I take the sword with me. They go to throw you with the sword just out of building. And you phase out of their hand and slide on the ground near the other two. And they just go... Now, isn't this nice? Finally being together again. All in person. Well, it's going to end just like last time, Lou, with you with your face in the ground. (laughs) Don't really recall that, but I recall you all running away. Yeah, and I remember you crying. What? (laughs) We all heard you, Lou. (laughs) It was really pathetic. Like a baby. Clear as day, whimpering like a newborn child. And it's kind of sad that you, you, you're, since you're so obsessed with us, you only just, you know, find us every so often. You'd think you'd kill us by now. Well, I think I'm going to make that dream come true today. Eh, too late. We're going to win. I love your confidence. And I love yours. But yours is misplaced. Lou, it doesn't matter how many flowers you have here. We're cutting them today. All right, any more quips you want to get out before I knock you back? Your mustache is too long. You need to trim it. Let that plague your mind in the rest of this conflict today. All right. I've got two trimmers right here, and I pull out the spectral katana and the dancing blade. All right. And I got a barber's cape, too. (laughs) And I pull out my my, uh, flying carpet. Let's just keep this train. Yes, Let's it's all going. coming together. <laughs> we need a comb. And we noticed that mole on your face as well. <laughs> I must say, while you are just a bunch of bumbling idiots, you do know how to stall. But enough with that. Let's do this. Yes, time to go to the salon. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> roll for initiative! <laughs> oh, right on. We're great. For the first time in I don't know how long, I've got an initiative above 10, and it's uh, an 18. Okay. Um, eight, 8 for me, DM. Uh, 14 for me. You see Lou is walking towards you all, and you see some blue juice is just like pumping through these flower root veins. And Darian, it's your turn. But you see, they launch forward. And before you get your turn, they are right in front of you with their fists. And they're going to attack. 17 hit. Unfortunately, it does. They hit, they boom. They slam you down as you try to block for 30 damage. They slam into you. And you go gliding back a little bit. And you feel your arms just buckle as you try to block this blow. It is your turn. What would you like to do? Immediately after catching my footing from taking that hit, I'm going to dash back towards him and activate a phantom strike. Okay. Natural 20, mother. Yeah! There you go, there you go. <laughs> That's all. Oh! Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. There so he it's, flexes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So hold on. Uh, well, it's it's two attacks. Boys. 
boys. Haven't touched it. Haven't touched, touched. What'd oh, oh it's on camera. Get? Fuck. It's another natural 20. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no no the camera. way. This is the day. Load guys. <laughs> This is the day to get the man. Yes. Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Shit. Roll your damage. Um. Oh, that's so fucking dope. Okay. Um. So grand total <laughs> after all bonuses, that's eighty damage total from the two attacks. What? Wow. Okay. And we do have a house rule that we never bring up because it's very improbable. But we have a house rule that if you roll three nat twenties in a row. Like on an attack roll or something, you insta kill. Insta kill something. <laughs> Podcast over. Podcast <laughs> over. Connor, let's see what you can do with another roll. Ah, it's a two. It's fine. <laughs> ah, oh, whoa, I'm sweating. No sweat. Everything. Oh, season three. That's the last one. Hey. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, All right. Effing wild. <laughs> you get knocked back but immediately phase out and go to slash them again. Their arm is already extended from the punch. So you see an opening as you slice their back and they go, "Mm." Oh, nice one, Darian. (laughs) Pick after your dad, don't you? Oh. And next is Zippy's turn. But before you go, Zippy, blue flower is pumping into their veins and they doof and move to attack you first before your turn. But why would you say it's my turn? Lou Blonger doesn't <laughs> care about turns. You fucker. It's meta. 22. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> okay. It's 35. Oh. Actually? <clears throat> yes. Oh, I'm piecing out of here, guys. <laughs> 35 damage. Punching into your fur. Zippy, your turn. Guys, I'm scared. You got this, man. You, you're Zippy West Burrow. I'm, I'm right behind you, man. Don't worry. Okay, I'm going to grab. Is Lou's arm still there? Did I get pushed away? You got pushed away. Like, like you got pushed away. Like just a few feet, like two or three feet. Okay, but their arm is like still in front of you. I look up, bloodied, and I'm just like, these punches are nothing, Lou. Not on me. Not on anyone. Which is why I'm gonna just don't mind me. I'm gonna do mass <laughs> cure wounds on the three of us here right now. <laughs> it means nothing. <laughs> don't pay attention not, to the spell. Not. Don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Uh, so the three of us will get healed. So with everything together, that's thirty health points oh. for everyone. Yeah, okay. boy. Yeah, boy. Everybody feeling a bit it's better like now. That hit never happened. And now I'm going to fly up a little bit and give them an attack of opportunity? No, like I'm like looking at him, so it's like he's like scared a little bit. All right. <laughs> You're slowly floating. You float on your magic carpet up to eye level. It's not like running away. It's like it's like I'm like looking. I'm looking. We're both looking at each other. I'm just slightly <laughs> right. raising. I'm slightly off the floor. There's no <laughs> right. way that's an attack of opportunity. Now, Norman, oh, it's your boy. turn. But quickly, Zippy, you notice they break your gaze, turn around, and dive towards you, Norman. They're going to try and hit. Does, does Zippy get an attack of opportunity? Oh, Zippy, come in clutch. You, you don't. Ah! They, move, they move so fast that their movement doesn't count as attack of opportunities. 20, not natural. They dive towards you and again punch you. Four? Only 28 damage. Yikes! Okay. They go slamming into you. You are all just getting, like, dived at and punched at at lightning speeds before you can even really react, but you're trying to do as much damage and heals as you can. Norman, what would you like to do? Okay. I want to, with my good hand, I want to try to grab his hand and cast Hold Person. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Choose a humanoid within range. You can see the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for the duration. Um, so it's a wisdom saving throw. Uh, DC 18. They save. Okay. And holding his hand, I want to... This was all an act, DM. I cast it and I say, I say, uh, hold on to this. 
And then I try to cast it. And then does he say anything in the meantime? He just says, pathetic. And you see the magic is starting to go up his arm. And then he breaks it by just like flexing. I try to sleight of hand a ring off of his hand. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Roll sleight of hand. Okay. Oh, come on. Take the power of my natural 20s. Oh. I, I, I bequeath it to you. <laughs> yes, I receive it. I receive it Lord. Uh Modified 20. Oh, see, you got some. You get a ring. <laughs> yeah! Yes! It slides off their finger and they're like, what the hell? Give me that back. And I, with my movement, I fly out of there as fast as I can. Like my full They flight. will get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, 60 feet. I fly 60 All feet All right. Away. Maybe maybe 40 feet away. I fly 40 feet away. You try to fly. Okay. 19. That hits. You go to fly, and they just go to slam you down into the ground, and they hit. <laughs> Healing. 36 damage. Yes. That might not have been my best idea. As they slam you, your chest craters into the ground as you like scurry and claw your way to keep flying away. But they deal that damage. And they just look at you all and say, Do you get it now, fellas? You're no match. You can't even touch me. You can steal my rings. You can even try to cut me down. But nothing you do will work. And you see the wounds on their back slowly start to heal. Frig me. Now, I think I can finally enjoy wringing each of your necks. And they slowly start walking towards you, Darian. And they're just getting ready to pounce and attack first. And then you see... They get slammed by a magic wand going flying backwards. And you see flying down, feather falling near you guys. It's really, they kind of stumble as they land and they just go, oh, Coco and Coco's friends. Thank you for the help, but you must run the crystal Coco, the crystal. It's okay, he'll never find it. Are you certain? I mean, maybe. Coco, it's not safe. It's okay, I've had torture done to me before, and and it went okay. Uh, actually... <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine, Vulius, trust us. We have to deal with Lou sooner or later anyways. Persuasion check. Can I say something to help him with that? Sure. Vulius, if the crystal is destroyed, lives will be lost, but how many more if Lou is allowed to continue his reign? They're pondering. Zippy, roll with advantage. So that's a 10 plus uh, 9, so 19. You're right. Lou needs to be stopped. And I am too weak to do it alone. Coco. I need your help. Well, I'm trying. I can take him down. But I need you all to distract him for a moment. Mm. I just need a moment. Wait, Vulius. What What are you sacrificing to take him down? Anything? This sounds bad. And you see two wands start to orbit around each of you. As you see one goes behind your back and a magic barrier goes around each of you. Whoa. And the other one goes to your side and he says it's nothing I haven't given before buy me time please you each gain 200 temporary hit points (laughs) (laughs) and you have a plus 3 magic wand that has a plus 3 to attack and hit and it has 6 d12 damage well, okay. I'm opening up a dice roller right now because I don't have that many details. I only need about a minute. Keep 
him occupied. You all turn. You see coming out of some crumbled buildings that they got knocked into is Lou, and they crack their neck, and they see you all. And Virulius starts sitting down and almost meditating, with a wand going to his temple. And you see, blasting forward is Lou. Darian, it is your turn, but before you can attack, they go to attack you. And instead of doing straight damage automatically, the barrier expands, clashing against their fist. We are going to roll strength. You will roll, and then I will roll, and we'll say our rolls. And whoever has higher gets one round. Whoever's the first to win three, the clash breaks, and whoever wins gets to attack. And the other one doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I follow. <laughs> okay. All right. Darian. I will roll first, actually. 17. 25. <laughs> Darian, you push back. You win. That was another natural 20, by the way. 14. Uh, 6. Lou is pushing. That's an 18. Uh, 14. Game point for Lou. 10. Uh, 12. <laughs> well, it's tie game. You see, Darian, you are pushing and pushing. Tied. And you just hear in the back of your head from your nat 20. Do it, kid. Get him. <laughs> Roll with advantage on this one. <gasps> All right. 16. 19. You win. <laughs> Lou, their fist arcs back as the clash loses. Darian, how do you want to attack? Um, Darian quickly calls out to Verulius and says, you better hurry up, Verulius. I plan on killing him myself. And he flips the wand in the air, catches it, and casts one of the spells from it. Okay. It's just going to zoom forward and just blast into their chest with force. Uh, so that's 48 damage. They get blasted, and they're doing like a cartwheel through the air as they land. And they look pissed. Anything else you want to do? Your second action. Um... Could I use another wand blast? Yep, you can keep using it as many times as you want. Cool, then I'm going to use my second attack action uh, to, yeah, to just cast another spell. You automatically hit, roll damage. Uh, that is 39. Okay. <laughs> they get hit, and they are just pissed. They look at you, Zippy, and they dive towards you. Time to clash. Ready? I put my hand out. 15. 17. Zippy wins. Pushing them back. 19. 20. Okay. Not natural? <laughs> natural. Natural. Yay! You are pushing them back and back. You get advantage on this next one. 22. Um, 8. Even with advantage. Okay. They are pushing you back. You still have two up and they have one. 8. Three. No! no Tiger! Move. Clashing forward. <laughs> oh. I'm get, it's hard. I'm not used to this. 13. 14. Yeah! Whoa. Zippy! Lou gets knocked back. <laughs> what do you want to do? Kidding. That's only a fraction of my power. <laughs> <laughs> I want to smack him with the wand. I want to smack him with it. Uh, 34. 34 damage. <laughs> Knocks them in their jaw. They look at you, Norman. They are just almost starting to snarl and growl as they are just fuming. They dive towards you, Norman. <sighs> Ten. Uh, that's a natural twenty. I can't oh believe it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's absurd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess <laughs> so I'm just vibing many. off of everyone else. The dice are against me. If we don't me. kill Lou today, it'll be a waste. <laughs> yeah. I don't. All right, you win. Next roll, you can roll with advantage. Okay. I'm getting close to natural 20s. That's a 24. Oh, even with advantage, that's a 17. Okay, 12. 17. Okay, you're pushing back. Ugh. 17. Yeah, eight. All right. Oh, I hate this. 17 again. Uh, five. They break through your barrier and go to slam into you. They are more and more juiced up. They are going to deal 73 damage. Wow. 
as they knock against you, but you're protected with another magical barrier of hell. 73 damage. Boom. You go flying uh. back. They see an opening. They see Verulius just sitting on the ground, using their wand against their temple. And they're like, oh, I know who is doing this. Can I use Hellish Rebuke? Sure. I use Hellish Rebuke. And I say, Lou, you don't belong her. They save. So he's going to take half of nine fire damage. And I'm hoping that hey. kind of imposes some, some kind of distraction on them. Round up to five. Five damage. And they're just like, no, another suit ruined by this fucking fire bastard. And they see Verulius and they're like, you're really helping them? You know they were in your vault? Taking your treasures? Oh, Verulius. You are a fool. And they go to dive. But Darian, you are in the line. You can block if you'd like. Yeah, so I actually am going to use a spell I've never used before. And that's Guardian of Nature. And you see as Lou starts to charge towards Verulius, Darian's skin starts to be covered with fur. And his face starts to twist and become feral, like fangs coming out of his mouth. And he goes, you stay away from him! And I'm going to dive in front and and try and tackle him to stop him. I've entered a primal beast-like state. You dive in front and they go clashing against your barrier. Strength time. So in primal beast, I have additional movement speed, dark vision, but on my strength-based rolls, I get advantage. All right. There you go. Advantage on all these rolls. 23. A 24. You win. You're pushing back just barely. 18. 24. <laughs> okay. Wow. Darian pushing back with his primal strength. Uh, 11. 21. Wow. Okay. Very good. Really help. Wow. What a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, you push them back. They go falling backwards. Use your two actions. I'm going to grab that wand again and aggressively cast, like whipping, like whipping the wand, basically, whipping the two spells towards him. All right. Roll the damage for both. So the first roll is going to be 31, and the second roll is 38. Okay. 31 plus 38, that's 69 damage! Oh my Let's god! Go. It's the number! Him. It, I got it. I it's don't even want to tell you where that wand went, <laughs> but it hit him. It's the sex number. Uh, Norma looks at Darian and says, nice. It blasts into them. They are looking like wounded and bloody, but it's starting to heal again. The blue flower is slowly healing. Zippy, you see... They're taking a moment to heal. You can go on the offensive, and you just hear Verulius go, It's almost ready. Just pin him down. Do whatever you can. Just make sure he is close to me. Yes, sir. I can't let Darian become a beast and, and me, you know, show me up. So Zippy gets on all fours, and I turn into... A brown bear. (laughs) 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 And I'm snarling like Darian was snarling, but not in a natural way, more of like a doing it because Darian did it in a a way. Um, And I rush over at Lou, and if anyone's seen a bear run, they're so aggressive and scary. That's exactly what this looks like. And I... I pounce on uh, Lou and try to get my teeth in him, but also I'm carrying the wand in my teeth. Okay. <laughs> Time to clash. 16. Uh, that's a 12. 5. A natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> Your barrier is crushing down on Lou. They're kind of like cratering into the ground as your weight is going on top and the barrier is clashing with his fist and he's trying to raise you up. (laughs) Roll with advantage on your next one. They got 13. Uh, I got 23. (laughs) (laughs) You're like pushing them down. 21. Uh, 7. 19. 9. 
Oh, no! The barrier breaks and you kind of go flying up in your back two legs as you stumble backwards and they go to just punch your bare belly and you get 57 damage as they slam into you, but you have your temporary hit points and it absorbs it. Norman, Lou is still on the ground. They're slowly picking themselves up. What are you gonna do? I wanna get into a position where my attack would push him away from Zippy. If I have to strafe maybe five or 10 feet to, just to angle my shot and then I would shoot. Okay. Get back! You go slamming into them to push them back with the wand. Strength time. 22. Three. 17. Four. 12. 19. Crash back and forth, pushing back and forth. 18. Oh, great. Ah, <laughs> 10. They break off and you go stumbling backwards as they just punch the ground and some rocks go exploding towards you, dealing 66 damage. Yikes. You know what? I will use the rest of my movement to p- position myself in front of Aurelius as a bit of a okay. shield. That's all I can do. Barricading together. You see, you're all there waiting. And Rulius goes, It's just about done. Everyone, hold him down. Are you all going to pounce on him together? Yeah, uh, since he punched me in the belly, but I'm still on my hind legs, I'm just going to simply fall full. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Darren, Norman, you're going to like try and grab an arm and push him down? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we'll do this round robin. So, Darian first. That's 18. Ooh, woof. Even with advantage, that's only 15. Okay, they're pushing back. Zippy. I said I would fall forward, but I'm actually going to spin on my heel and suplex. (laughs) Okay, okay, you're going to fall back. 14. (laughs) Uh, That's 11. Ooh. Okay, Norman. 9. 16. (laughs) Okay, Norman is pushing down. Darian. 17. 19. Pushing down. Zippy. 23. 21. (laughs) All right. You're falling backwards. Norman, nat 20 for me. Oh, shoot. It's a 5% chance I could also get a nat 20. Uh, (laughs) No way! Yeah! Oh, my gosh. I can show you. Show you, right? I see it. I see it. Just when I thought I had you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the I mean, one time I mean, I, I'm going to win. Uh, the one time today. And Seth, can can I explain that? How you rolled in that 20? We all know how it goes. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I, I like to think I'm holding him down with my one hand, and then with my level tattoo, my other hand animates just enough to hold him down for that little bit more. Okay. Yeah, it, it's going full Gumby and expanding, and <laughs> you're, you're pushing him down. Darian! Strength. Eight. Uh, 16. Okay. <laughs> One more for Darian, and he's good. Zippy, that's a 15. That's a seven. You are getting pushed back with, with they're like pushing their chest up because you're on their front. All right, 17, Adam. Okay, 13. They're pushing back, and they just say, get the hell off of me. Darian, 11. That's another 16. Darian is locked in. Zippy. Again, 15. 23. Okay. One more and you're locked in. Everybody is pushing him down and he's just going, No, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Norman. Eight. 13. Okay. Norman's locked in. Zippy, let's finish it off. 18. I'm locking in DM. That's a nine. (laughs) They are reeling and trying and trying. One more. Has anyone noticed that this bear has like amazing rolls and then really bad rolls? It's like, (laughs) (laughs) like back and forth. (laughs) He's like, he's like, he's like uh, trampolining on this, uh, on this bubble with, Norman and Darian locked in. Zippy, you are good to try one last time. 19. That's a seven. No! You no! see, throwing all of you back. You go flying towards Verulius. 
and Lou starts rising and looks at all of you and sees Verulius. And Verulius has a mental wand to their temple. And he's just like, all right, enough games. And they're about to launch. Verulius quickly takes out from his cloak a bowl, a nice brass bowl. And he quickly removes the wand from his temple. You see some like flowing magic between his temple and the wand as he points it towards the bowl and it starts filling with liquid. And Lou Blonger dashes forward. And Verulis just goes, there we go. It's over. Oh, it is far from over. Have you ever witnessed firsthand a grand treasure? Oh, come on now. And black. You're enshrouded in darkness. Oh, no. And you start seeing twinkling lights like stars. And you see holding Lou Blonger's fist, stopping him right before hitting Verulius is a construct with four eyes to look like a Wesnian creature. And Verulius lets go. And even though it was a massive blow, the construct does not move. And he goes, what is... Nice. You see one of his rings flash as he tries to dispel this. And you see nothing happens. What kind of game are we playing? And Verulius stands up. You may want to look around. Blue. The scene changes to a wide open sea with lots of shipwrecked debris floating on the surface in the middle of a violent storm. The waves crashing, the winds howling. And one individual grasping on for dear life onto some planks of wood. Brighten up the sky. You can see that the younger Lou Blonger notices a towering hand looming like a pillar out of the ocean. And a lighthouse-like beam illuminates on him. The scene changes to a dark cave where Lou Blonger is feeling his way down with his hand along the wall. His clothes are torn. His beard is coming in. He looks completely ruffled and and torn up and beaten up by his recent adventure. And then he enters into a clearing. It looks to be like a little natural vineyard in this cave. I could have sworn I'd been in this cave before, but there was no food, there was nothing. What is this? And Lou Blonger holds up a grape that he picks off a vine, and the grape is swirling with some sort of magical energy. This. I've never seen anything quite like this. Things may finally be turning around for me. (laughs) 
Lou! Lou, has anybody seen Lou Blonger? Please. Okay, okay. Alyssa, I can hear you all the way back here. You don't need to shout. Gilbert, why did you come back here? I mean, L Lou, it's... It's kind of insensitive. It's kind of insulting. I mean, I mean, you yeah, I, I know. You I'm... broke the connection our flowers had, and, and now you think that you can bring the balance better on your own? I mean, you gotta come on. Divide and conquer? Yeah, right. It, it's pretty ridiculous. Just After everything we've been through, that, Lou, that you can Lou, Lou, listen. Listen, this isn't a joke. I need to talk to you, please, quick. Okay, okay, all right. Here, side room. I got one right here. Let's go. All right, you got my attention, Gilbert. What is going on? Why are you so frazzled? I found a grand treasure. Oh, fuck off! No, okay. I'm serious. <laughs> no, no. I don't know what to do. Oh, sure, sure. And, okay, what'd you find? What what grand powers did you find in there? It's Come on, not. It, it's not a thing. It's it's. I, I, it could be. I don't know. Really, too much, but. They are. Ho oh, oh, ho! Hey, 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 whoa. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You can't just come barging into a room with, with the hell are Gilbert! You? Why are we here? This isn't bringing me any closer to parlay. Oh, Karen, can you just wait? Okay. Uh. uh Gilbert, what the. K Karen, this is uh, Lou Blonger. Uh, he can totally help us find parlay. Uh, hold on now. You can? What do you know? Tell me everything. Uh, yeah. I, I know they. Go with it, please. They, uh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, I mean, I, we go way back, way back. And, and I, I totally can, uh, uh, take it, take it to them. Yeah, There's no time to wait. Take me now. What are you doing, Verulius? This. This is your grand treasure. <laughs> you, you, you found the worst one, I guess. I mean, you, you think I'm gonna stop everything I'm doing over a few memories, a few flashbacks? <laughs> oh, come on! You really have gone senile. You would do well to reflect on your memories, Lou. They house the fragments of our life okay, stories. Okay. Enough, enough, enough with the stupid philosophy lesson. I don't care. I can sense your magic draining. It's over. Goodbye, Verulius. <laughs> Loop Longer explodes forward with unnatural speeds, with their fists enshrouded in vines and thorns, going to punch Verulius. But one of the wands surrounding him flies out and casts a barrier over himself and you three. And their fist slams into the barrier. Their fist and the magical energy of the barrier are clashing, and you can see the barrier is breaking quickly. Give it up, old man! This is Kahani, the goddess of fables and grand treasure. Almost there! I have named it the actor. I can't wait to break it apart! And Lou, we can do two things. Oh yeah? Tell me. Pose your hand right now, you old frog. Number one. It could replay memories of your story. <laughs> and I told you, memories ain't changing a thing. Especially the ones you needed to learn from the most. The scene changes to a homey little house with a woman cleaning wooden dishes in a barrel full of water after apparently a big midday feast. And as she's cleaning, a little boy comes skipping down the stairs nearby with a huge oversized backpack strapped to their back and giant circular glasses attached to their face. The woman speaks up. Now, Benedict Lou Blonger, where do you think you're going? 
M- M- Ma, I'm, I'm just gonna go play with my friends. I-, I-, I hope that's okay. Okay, but did you help your pa finish all his chores? Yes, I did, I did. I helped everything he said I could go to. Okay, but remember you're still grounded, so no leaving Kumba, okay? Can't have you running off to the Rainbow Reserve again. Jeez, you scared me half to death. Be careful and, uh, here's some snacks to bring your friends. Thanks, Ma. Lou Blonger's fists starts lowering away from the barrier as they turn around. This... No, this can't be. And the little boy goes running out the door into the town of Kumba. A very farm-centered town with just rolling hills and simple dirt paths. The boy with their backpack bouncing with every step, eventually regroups with their friends. Hey, Benedict, over here. Hey guys, how's it going? Betty, check it out, look what I made. Isn't it cool? We're gonna be greeters, check it out. This is my greeter hat. Isn't that just a a paper boat on your head? It's not really a hat. Yeah, sure, on the outside it's a paper boat, but on the inside, it's vessel for my hopes and dreams as a greeter. I'm not going to take this thing off until I find a grand treasure. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to find other hats you're going to want to wear, so maybe don't make such a huge promise with this one. No, it has to be this one. This one. This is going to be it. Without saying a word, Ublonger leaves and walks away from the barrier. Deeper towards the boys in the scene. And Verulius turns to you three. Oh my god! Coco, I'm sure a childhood memory will only distract him for so long. But to do the second ability that this grand treasure holds, going to need to give a lot of memories. What does that mean? I don't get to pick and choose which it takes. So I don't know who I will be on the other side. I understand. Before that happens, is there anything else you want to share with me? Before you may forget me. You were always my best friend. And I'm sorry I couldn't find you over there. I wish I could have made it on my own. I'm sorry, Coco. I go up and grab his hand. You did enough, Ferulius. More than anyone else could have. It's okay. It's okay. All of you. I need but a moment. Keep him distracted once more, please. And your magic wands leave you and start to encircle him again. You you retain your your HP, though. Dean, while he's doing this, can I just say, are there any words he wants to share for your grandson? Just tell him. That he can be whatever he wants to be. And tell Randy to always do what bards do best. We will. You all see Lou kneeling. This was low, even for someone like you. You have officially set me off. And you see Lou slowly starts rising to their feet. They turn around to face you all. And their eyes are filled with 
rage. You fucking frog. They are glowing with power. You can almost hear the whispers emanating around them from the people he is absorbing. And you see, they are on a whole other level from what you were fighting earlier. You can't help but feel afraid. Roll for initiative. Fucking hell. Let's hold him back, boys. <laughs> I don't know if we can. I got an 11 DM. Oh, I did too. I got a 10. <laughs> right, I'll smack dab in the middle. Lou stares at you, Zippy. Just says, get the fuck out of my way. And they're going to dash and they're just running towards Brulius. There's no clash. They're just running like an animal. What are you going to do? I think this situation has got a little bigger. I think that calls for my bear to get a little bigger. Yes. It's time to use my greeter cloak, I think. And so I'm going to activate my cape of beginning. Zippy, your cloak is causing you to grow and double in size. You are a massive bear. And how, how big am I compared to Lou now? Your bear was already bigger than uh, Lou. So now you are like a massive bear. Like if you were on your back legs, you'd be like maybe four stories tall. <laughs> Whoa. This cloak doesn't make you just enlarge by normal means. It casts it like twice. I want to I want to swipe at Lou with my big bear claw. Okay, roll to hit. That's a 4. Okay. You miss as Lou goes sliding under. Okay, now I, well since my my paw missed, I'm going to bite him. Uh that's an 18 DM. Lou Blonger has his AC down because he is just focused on strength. An 18 will hit. Okay, then I'm going to roll damage. Uh, That's a 14. Okay. You go chomping, and it pierces their suit, and they just go, and they rip your jaw open again. You bite down, falling, but you did land the attack. Normandy, it is your go. I want to cast Minor Illusion in front of Aurelius. And I want, because he's small, he fits within a five foot cube. I want to replace it with the image of a little boy in a paper hat standing there. Okay. Looking scared. Roll performance. 10 plus 7, 17. For a second, they see that and they just freeze for a second. And they're like, you can see they're mentally straining as they see it. it. Their eyes are just filled with rage. Darian, you get advantage on your attacks for this round as they are they they are just stalling for just a moment. Okay, I'm going to draw the spectral katana, activate my guile of the ser- the serpent, and go in for three swings. Unfortunately, my prime primal beast form is worn off by now. That's a 17 to hit on the first one, 28 to hit on the second. And a 25 on the third. Two of those hit. 33 damage. You go slicing and dicing with your attacks as they freeze for a moment. And you can see blood splurting out. And the blood they're leaking is starting to turn blue. And you see some pollen leak out as you do slice them. Norman and Zippy, watch your mouths. You see Lou Blonger is pissed. 
And he just goes, no, no, no! And he just slams his fists in the black void space and you just see ripples of shockwave of force damage. Everybody make a dexterity saving throw. 12. 26. 23. Norman, you fail. Zippy and Darian, you succeed. Normandy, you take 74 damage. And Zippy and Darian, you take 37. Oh, I I am instantly bloody uh, in this attack. The waves blast you guys backwards about 10 feet as Lou dashes forwards towards Verulius again. They're getting closer and closer and Verulius just goes, almost there, one more round. Zippy, you see Lou Blonger is diving and reaching midair. They are 10 feet, but they are flying through the air. What are you going to do? I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to make a shield around Verulius. I'm just going to, to almost like how a dog curls up in a bed. I'm going to do that around Verulius. Okay. Um, I will allow that. Normandy. You see, you're all seeing this basically in bullet time. Like you're all acting at the same time. Normandy. What would you do? DM, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to cast Phantasmal Killer on Lou Blonger. Um, it's okay. a, it's a wisdom saving throw. I, to tap into the nightmares of a creature you can see within range, um, wisdom saving throw DC 18. They fail. You see they're diving and then all of a sudden you see their eyes go wide as they see something. I will not tell you what, uh-uh. but the only thing that could only scare Lou Blonger, they immediately go, no, and they raise their other hand. And one of the rings activates and force blasts them backwards as they slide across the ground, looking skittish as they were just about to grab Zippy's bear hide. Darian, now! Now that Lou's dashed back and created an opening, I'm going to activate my Guile of the Serpent again, sprinting forward. And at the last second, when he goes to read my position, I'm going to distant strike and teleport to the other side for another three strikes. Okay. That's 29. That hits. That's 28. That hits. And that's another 28. Of course those hit. That's 45 damage. You go slicing and slicing and slicing as you teleport behind them. And you slash up their back. And they just go, Ah! Will you just stop? And they go turning to try and just smash you with their fist, area. Just you. <laughs> you man. Ugh. Everybody's getting at 20s. And then I get a now one. I think I'm the only one to get a now <laughs> one for it. <sighs> Lou Blonger is just overcome with emotion. They've let their guard down. They've just gone full animal. And they just go blindly swinging as Darian, you duck. And they trip and slam their fist into the ground. Just smashing it in frustration. And you, Zippy, are cuddled around Verulius. Verulius just is still has a wand to their temple, weaving out their memories. I'm looking at him like... like we're basically having like a private moment because we're just, it's just like so circled around in my head, it's like on the inside, and I'm just looking at him, and he's like I'm looking at him fondly, like I admire him and respect him. He's slowly going, and you can see he puts a hand against your fur, and just says, "Thank you for everything." No. The second thing it can do, in exchange for my stories, I can write a new one right now. And the memories pour out of his head into the bowl that now has a beam of light arcing out of the bowl, just like the one you guys smashed in the vault. And you just see Lugo. What the hell does this even mean? And you see the construct who always stays still starts to move. They start like jogging in place, just jogging. And they start 
trying to push you aside, Zippy. Just like push your big bare body and it's like, let me see, let me see. I move out of the ways, uh, or, or provide an opening for Verulius to see the construct. But still kind of like protect him. You split your legs. And they can see through. And they just go. <sighs> Once upon a time. And the construct's eyes flash. What the fucking hell? And they pounce. A thief was walking down a lonely path. And you see the construct immediately grabs him out of the air, rips his arms back, slams him in the ground, and is like wrapping themselves around Lou so that they are like enshrouding him as armor. And he's like, ah, what? And he can't move. He can't budge. The construct will not move. And they start walking as the scene changes to this wooded path. And they're forcing him to walk. A lonely path filled with brambles that slice through their skin as if it were paper. And you see the automaton has metal bits that dig into his skin and just start scraping. And he's like, what? And he's moving forward and you're all watching. And Norman, behind you, you see an automaton wraps itself around you, another one, another construct. And it enshrouds you quickly in armor. And it says, And along came a merchant riding in a wagon. And you see, all of a sudden it transforms and becomes a wagon and you're like riding in it in this makeshift armor. A wagon overflowing with wealth and treasures. The man begged for their help. But the merchant was wise and would not leave the wagon to become a victim of this thief's obvious schemes. So instead of being swindled to the merchant, they are... Uh, and Verulis is starting to stumble, and you can see Lou Blonger is near your wagon, and it's just glaring and staring at you as their head is arced up towards you. And they're being like, uh, uh. And a construct near Verulius turns their head towards him, and their eyes start to glow red as he is not finishing his story. Norman, would you like to suggest a prompt? I think I hear wolves in the distance. Maybe something even more menacing. Wolves? Yes. There's wolves in the distance. Came. And the merchant ran off. Leaving the thief to the wolves. Yes. And you see other constructs come out of the darkness and morph into wolves and just start biting and tearing and ripping him. You see Lou Blonger's left arm gets torn off his body as he's just screaming. He's just, what is now? And you can see it's starting to heal and it's starting to like reforge from blue flower juice. But the thief carried on and came a knight. Darian, around you, a suit of armor from the construct. <laughs> A knight walking down the path with glistening armor. The man attempted to befriend the knight in order to receive their help. And you see you're face to face with Lou and Lou is just like trying everything he can to just claw at you and he's like, I'm not afraid of yours, you fucking... And then you see the automaton starts like going into his mouth and it's like, I would like to be your friend. And they're like forcing them to say it. But the knight knew better than to trust a thief such as this. So the knight... uh, uh, Darian, would you like to suggest a prompt? They decided to enact justice on the thief. Justice, yes. Taking the law into their own hands. Quick and swift. And you see 
blue blonde <laughs> goes to their knees. And wow, they have their hands put down and their head bows as a part of the construct reveals itself, leaving his neck bare. And Darien, you raise up your katana. And... <laughs> Lublonger's head separates from their body. And you just hear Lublonger gurgling. And that was the end of... And you can see it. It's starting to move. Lublonger's body is starting. Everything, the construct is shaking that's surrounding him. As his head is starting to reform. You can see a thorny husk is starting to reform. And you just hear... No! No! And then... Okay. At last... Came a glimmer of hope. For the thief. And it starts making him walk. A rabbit. And it starts going around you, Zippy. In your big bear form. And it's forcing you out of your wild shape. Hey! To being Zippy, a rabbit, a lapine. A rabbit hopped out of a nearby bush onto the path. The man, overcome with hunger, pain, and everything else, they lunged at the rabbit. Uh, you, see, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, see, it lunges at you, and your automaton, Curus, forces you to dodge, as they say, but the rabbit was too quick. And they, and they, Zippy, what would you like to add to the story? And the rabbit was very nimble, so quick in fact. He ran all around, through his legs, and it made the thief very confused, to the point where it seemed like there were many rabbits all around. Yes, the rabbits multiplied. <laughs> you see... <laughs> Cloning is starting to happen. Ooh, many zippies. And you hear from the face of Lublonger, his mouth is reconstructed. He's just like, this fucking rabbit. And the rabbits, they confused and ran circles around the thief, taunting them at every corner. And then they, they, uh, they, and you see, Ferulius is really struggling to figure it out, and you see a construct in the distance, most likely the main one. Their eyes are glowing red. They are, uh, they, they are, uh. They attracted a pack of wolves, large, large and numerous, that fell upon them like an avalanche. Of violence. Yes. The wolves stormed and tore and ripped until nothing was left. And you see G -g 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 -g. all these wolves descend as all the clone zippies scatter off. And the wolves rip, 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 rip. And there's like just like a chess piece. They're scrambled. And you just see some organs and some muscle is connecting the parts. And you just hear and you just see Paul and he's glowing on his chest over his heart is the blue flower tattoo pulsing and pulsing and then a god appeared before the thief <sighs> and you see the construct walks forward the main one they appeared before the man, but the man could not move, nor speak, nor even keep their thoughts straight. They lay there in the road, in the God's presence. They had all their connections torn, and had 
their life drained from their body and were no more. And you see, the construct raises their hand and divine light starts sparkling wow. and shining on Lou's carcass. And you just see and Lou is screaming and just saying no! No! Do you see it now? How unfair these creatures are. They are what's wrong with the world. This is not the end. Their blue flower and body is dissolving as their blue flower is pulsing. And it's closing in, fading away. And you just see a spark of blue before nothing is left. Lou Blonger is dead. We we did it. Guys, we did it. I man. Am I still in my cool armor? No, the the, the constructs are starting to release you as Verulia says. And the thief was no more. The end. And the constructs fade away, and they eject you. Is he... Is he really gone? DM, I want to... I want to go to where his body was. And look, and I'll say, Maybe someone check on Verulius. Okay. While that's happening, I'm... Going to quickly look at my leg... I want to slide the circlet just just past the flower first and see if, as the star metal isn't blocking it anymore, if the flower in some way comes back to life or awakens in some form. You start sliding it off and realizing just how close this circlet was to breaking as it was gnawed on by a cobra earlier in the season. And you can see the blue flower on your leg is gray whenever the star metal's on it. And when you slide it off, it remains gray. As the two other guys have kind of ran off to check their own things, I just g- gently call out, Guys, the flower on my leg, it's dead. What? He might, he might really be gone. Uh, DM, I, I, I'm like searching the ground for that, that, that blue flash, whatever that was. Like, I'm looking for any residue. You see nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I, I reach into my pocket and I pull out the ring that I stole from Lou. Is there any like blue trace of like, any kind? Do I get a sense that like he's <laughs> like, he's no, living you in get the, no okay. sense of Lou on it. Nothing. Okay. It's, it seems to be a magic ring that you'll have to get diagnosed at some very obvious uh, magic salesman. Okay. <laughs> and I, sweet. And I, and I put it away. Is it be you see Verulius? He's walking back. He walks past you guys and he goes, where are we? And who are you? Oh, but this. A barrier, yes. I need to deal with this. And they go and they push their hand against the barrier to break out of the sequence just like you guys did in the vault. And as their hand touches it, you see the construct behind them. And you see the scene starts to change. Coco, come on! I deserve to know what it is you're talking about with Gong. It's it's only right. Are you just going to stay silent? Ignore me? After everything I've helped you with? 
Coco, please say something. <sighs> Ferolius. I don't even know what you want from me. What I want to know is the next steps. How does it get to the other side? Like, like what, are, what are we going to do? And how am I going to get there? Trust me. You don't want to hear the answers to your questions. Let's just keep going on the way we've been going okay, on. Okay, no. I'm not sitting by and just constantly being pulled by your strings. I deserve to know what is happening. Julius. You can't come with us. What? Like, uh, like I can't go with you. can't come with us. To the other side. You just can't. <laughs> but Gong said that the whole point was to, to find the bridge, to get to the other side and away from the gods and be free. So we were all going to make it that's there. That's not what... That's what, what you told me. That's what the conversations were about. No, that's not what... How can you tell me that everything is changing all of a sudden? You're not listening you just to can't me. just say that and, and decide that that's the way that... I told you that. What? I told you all of that to string you along I needed you to help me build my initial connection with Gong. You were never going to make it to the other side. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm coming with you. And if you don't think there's a way, and if Gong doesn't think there's a way, I will find a way. <laughs> You can. You know the power to you, Verulius. Wait, 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 wait. Where, where are you going? Tomorrow I'm making the jump. Wait, you already know how? She says it would be months, but uh, has everything you told me been a lie? No. Only a few details I kept to myself. I truly did appreciate your help. But I have to go. And I have to do it on my own. Fine. Then I will go on my own too. Can you promise me this? I don't know if I'm in a position to promise You it. owe me at least this. If you truly do make the jump. And if... On the other side, you see any chance of helping me get there too, then you take it. Or at least open whatever portal, bridge, whatever it is, you try. You owe me that. Goodbye, Verulius. Go, 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 go! Get back here! Go, go! Go, go! And the barrier breaks. And that's where we're gonna take a break. Whew. <clears throat> Hello. This is End Roll Seth. One of the other infinity sets, I suppose, to join the club. Very rare do I ever appear in an episode. But I was wrong. I thought I could get this done in this second part here. And I have to apologize because uh, I did I did not. Um, we don't want to give you a four-hour episode. So... There will be a part three. Surprise! <laughs> and it will be coming out. Endrol Seth is still not any better with the calendar, but it will be coming out on December 9th. Yes, two days from now, we will be giving you the second half of the part two 
of the season three finale. It's very confusing. But either way, it will be part three, and uh, it'll be the whole other half. And that will be like a full episode uh, length as well. Uh, So yes, sorry, but also not sorry, because we're giving you so much content. Uh, But either way, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me get to my regular end roll responsibilities. First up, the Legend Tier Patrons. We love ya, we love to shout you out, and let me go through the list. We got Brandon, Jacob, Jardine, Yule Timer, and Randy. That is the crew. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you Legend Tier Patrons, and thank you to all of those who are on our Patreon. Again, the lifeblood of the show allows us to edit these episodes to the ridiculous lengths we do uh, and really motivates us to push this content further and further beyond what any D&D show has ever done before, hopefully. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, again, next episode, December 9th, two days from now, get excited. And then after that, I will announce when the Great Pass Round will be coming around this year. And other than that, if you could rate and review us on iTunes or Podchaser or any of those places, it really helps get us out there invisible in other people's uh, lists of podcasts. So it really goes uh, and helps us and you get potentially it written and reviewed on our show. Um, and yeah, I, I don't have anything else other than that. If you want updates on any, you know, Cheaper by the Dungeon news, follow us on Twitter at Cheaper Dungeon, Facebook, Cheaper by the Dungeon and Instagram, Cheaper underscore Dungeon. And uh, that's everything. I will see you all in two days. All right. End roll, Seth. Out!